Let me just say, Sky, here's the incel problem. Yeah. And then here's the in mon problem. What is an in mon problem? In mon. Okay, I'm not really that concerned about the incels. I'm interested. I'm concerned about in involuntary monogamy. <laughs> involuntary monogamy that's the biggest problem i think you sky you have to deal with your jealousy issue so you can leave the ranks of the inmons what if you meet a woman who is the greatest sex of your life and it's not your wife it's not your primary partner i'm in a very privileged position i'm the best sex melissa's ever had in her life she, <laughs> she is the best sex i've ever had not everyone's in this position dude what percentage of women are married to a man today who is not the best sex they've had in their life how many women are in a committed relationship, boyfriend, girlfriend? But that's, but that's their fault. And, not, and, they, and they know. No. So I ask you, in terms of justice and injustice, if mm -hmm. I fall in love with a younger woman and she has never had sex with anyone in her life except me, yes, is it a justice or injustice for me to prevent her from having the experience of, let's say, having sex with 10 other men? But like, not in one day. Over 10 years or over 20 years, doesn't matter. You know, so that mm -hmm. she gets to live a life where she has known what it's like to have sex with with 10 different men. Uh, you, I, I am just pointing out, you are cool with this sexual freedom for yourself. No, I'm but not. not for your own no, wife no. or primary no, partner. Are, she no, doesn't get you, to live by the same rules you live no, by. You so are totally you are 45. Up. Are you telling me you have never been in an open relationship, a multi-partner, never your whole, or have you tried it and it didn't work and now you feel like you can't make it work? What? Hey, ain't no school for this shit. Ain't no school for this shit. You gotta be smart enough to pick up the information as you go. If you can find a nigga that could tell you that I own something, I'll give him whatever you say I own. But because I can't remember a nigga doing nothing for me, nigga. Welcome back. <laughs> Every single person who participated in this uh, episode, this collaborative uh, broadcast, received a warning by email. This was going to be like R-rated to X-rated. This was going to be risque, sexy discussion. I got to yeah. tell you something. Sky, I've been listening the whole broadcast up to this point. It hasn't you are been some fucking perma virgins, okay? <laughs> I mean, you guys don't know the front end of the dick from the back. This is the I... the least sexy, the least romantic Valentine's Day podcast. I could get uh, more sexuality out of Mario sixty four speed running. I didn't expect in the room, okay? I did Come ex on. I didn't expect everybody to be like, no, nah, I don't celebrate it. Straight up, what you had fucking totally forgettable. But forgettable, come on, it's Valentine's Day. Anal? You know, come we, on. No, anal? we no, talked no, about. No, what? You, yeah, you know what? I got myself for Valentine's Day. I got myself a fucking membership on a polyamory app. How about you, homeboy? What do you well, want? You want, you want, you want to you, you want to go real life? You want to think about bullshit? You got the polyamory app? You want to about fantasy football league Instagram? Uh, you know, double, but you know, fake uh, wearing a mask on YouTube fundraiser bullshit. I mean, come on, come on. I've never, I've never liked the polyamory thing, so I've never. I, but my my former um tour mate had that app that you're referring to. You're gonna end up I, like Peter Singer, Sky. You're repressing the side. I know someone's gonna I, that, that. But I'm like, I'm like Peter Singer. That's exactly what it is. I'll have a harem one day, and people are like, oh. oh Sky seems so virtuous. Or is, it, or is it just that Peter Singer tries to make each woman he's sleeping with think that he has a harem? You see what I'm saying? You see, there are optics involved here. He wants each of them to think they're competing against a bunch of but are they really? No, 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 no. The other ones, we don't know where they are, but the harem of 30 women, supposedly. 30 is a large number. It's a big harem. I mean, yeah. there's sheep out there that would balk at 30. But the polyamory <laughs> thing is always seems... Uh, dicey to me i couldn't i wouldn't be able to handle it like um my... uh, for me for me you know it's really like a kind of double blind placebo group therapy let me write this down you know imagine double, you had an app double, double blind. blind placebo group therapy so like okay. imagine you had an app on your phone that was yeah. entirely people who learned chinese studied chinese they started studying chinese after the age of 30 and got before it. you got on this app, you thought like, you know, this is really hard. Can I really do this? Can I make it work? And then you join this app and you see all these people, all these people in your neighborhood, in your city who started learning Chinese over 30 and now they're 35, 40, whatever. And they're making it work. You know what I mean? There are different levels of accomplishment. And of course, most of these people, you look at them and think, 
this person's way stupider than I am. This person's way lazier than I am. In some cases, way uglier. And they are managed to, managing to make Chinese work. Chinese work. So the point is this. <laughs> you join a polyamory app. Even if you don't meet up with a single person, you don't get laid, you don't fall in love, whatever. You don't, uh, you don't turn your triangle into a pentagon or whatever it is. Uh-huh. You know, <laughs> your 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 polycule doesn't take on any more uh, polycule. Any you're more not, geometric not, dimensions? The harem isn't expanding. See, the harem is one form of polyamory that, yes. like, relies on slavery. <laughs> yes, yeah, sure, but that's one form. People having like I, I I guess I don't I wouldn't be able to handle it I could I'm too jealous I'd be too jealous I, okay so Elon work. Musk is fucking your girlfriend yeah. He, yeah 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 while he's doing it his dick falls out and she's like put it back in wow and you're like and I have to help I have to no, come no, no. I'm gonna come out of the closet and I'm like you're I not got there the you're not even there you you don't have to watch it you're not there you okay. just have to know you just have to know it happened yeah. No, I couldn't. I couldn't. I'd want to kill I him. I think and this is why you specialized in Shakespeare. You're, you know, you're Iago. What can I tell you, man? You, you Iago? Know I'm, I am not a Iago. <laughs> if anything, I'm fucking. If anything, I'm you're a fellow himself. No, yeah, I might be a fellow no. in that story. Look, bro. You, so you, you've just been saying all this bullshit about <laughs> veganism. You know, oh, oh and you like, you care about slavery. You want to have a movement that's totally, totally based on the the perception of animal exploitation. Doesn't yes. deal with things like climate change and rising ocean levels and parts per million of carbon dioxide. Oh no, no! You know you. Well, I said it's okay to talk about those things. One tenth of one percent of people give a fuck about how of animal suffering. Okay, cool. Cool story. Suffering. Bro. I don't talk about animal suffering either, but I think well, look, it's okay. Let's, to talk, let's about talk about. Let's talk about I just don't slavery. Like that veganism. There's Please, labels. Let's matter. talk about slavery and let's talk about justice and injustice in human sexuality relationships, marriage. For just a second, this guy okay? blocked me. I didn't block anybody. I never. Okay. I haven't blocked so anybody. Historically, either. historically, marriage in basically all Western cultures, European culture, it is. It was a form of property ownership, a form of slavery. Actual, we just talked but, about it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But a not- man very much owned his wife or wives, plural. And, you know, it's yeah. true there were kind of first-class slaves and second-class slaves and third-class slaves, and the wife was an especially privileged kind of slave. But nevertheless, wives were very right. much bought and sold and owned, and that really was our was our uh, tradition. Now, you know, so I ask you, in terms of justice and injustice, if yeah. I fall in love with a younger woman and she has never had sex with anyone in her life except me, yes, is it a justice or injustice? For me to prevent her from having the experience of, let's say, having sex with 10 other men, but like, not in one day, over 10 years or over 20 years, doesn't matter, you know, so that mm-hmm. she gets to live a life where she has known what it's like to have sex with with 10 different men. You know, okay. so I, I think there's the question of justice and injustice here. And I think there is a, a there is a confusion about slavery and property ownership in, in gender relations. That's that's ancient and it's a continuous part of our culture. Yes. It's yes. very easy to see when we turn and look at Muslim culture. It's very easy when trying to look at Hindu culture. Well, like wedding Hindu ceremonies too. You can, you can see it in our in in Western wedding ceremonies these vestiges of these of the trappings of slavery. But hey, but, but, but if this woman is this not your property, do? if this okay. woman is not your slave, what is she and what is what is your relationship? What is it based on? No, I, I'd be real with you that I don't feel jealousy. And again, that doesn't mean I can't imagine it. It means I'm doing the work to imagine. I do think it is it is very to me, and I don't know to what extent that's just a biological idea. Or reflects my upbringing. So, Sky, I grew up going to nudist colonies from early childhood. I was I was seeing other men's dicks and other women's vaginas. Mm. I grew up in a communist. Yeah, we all did, up- though. We all went to the gyms and went we to all, beaches. And stuff. When did you go to your first nude beach? You went to Cap Dag in fucking 2012. You blind piece of shit. No. <laughs> Come on, own up, own no, up to it. I think when you were living right. in Berlin, was probably the first time you went to a. No, no, that here. was like a sauna. Yeah, we oh, there were they have co-ed saunas, but no, there was have a. You, um, have you done okay? So this is the Valentine's Day. This is after dark. Have you done that thing? You go in the sauna, you throw yourself dark. in the freezing cold bath. You yes. Throw yourself in the freezing cold, and then you have sex. Have you done that? Um, I'm not. I we did the uh, the the eucalyptus whipping. Yeah, thing. and you combine yeah. that with. I am told that, like Sweden, Norway, those countries, there are official government guidelines urging you not to have sex. And look, sex and sauna don't mix because this yeah. causes heart attacks or something causes so many health problems. So I, I, I don't I even know if that's true. But I'm told, like, when you go to the sauna and, and someone's, they have a warning on the wall saying, like, don't yeah, do it. Do Everybody wants to do not combine sauna and sex. So, 
Yeah, they do that, but I think it's because anytime you put boys and girls in a room together, they end up doing things that disturb others, and so they don't want that happening. They don't want to go into it. The worst okay. thing in a co-ed sauna would go into see two people fucking, you know what I mean? Okay, model airplanes, sauna. Not the same thing. I, I think sauna is is one of, you know, sauna, yeah, naked. running out of the sauna, throwing yourself into a freezing cold lake, you know. It's not, you know, it's not Magic the Gathering. Okay, no, it isn't. It's but, magic okay, the Gathering and Magic the Fappening, you know what I'm saying? But if we're, yeah. Magic the fappening, exactly. It's the fappening. So if we, if we, <laughs> I'm not sure exactly what this, where we're getting to. Uh, polyamory You're 45. Are you telling me you have never been in an open relationship, a multi partner, never your whole, or have you tried it and it didn't work, and now you feel like you can't make it work? What, what, what's your overall? I um. I, I've 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 had my fun. I've I've lived in I've lived in places where it was totally acceptable, and I've I've played the field and all of that. I have never been the but I've never been the person who wants to be in a relationship, and we have a relationship, and we've given each other titles and all of that, and then we're both fucking other people on the side like that. So, is you, just, so your perspective is quintessentially American, which is that you're yeah. not. You're not exclusive until you're exclusive. That there's like an earlier phase of the yeah. relationship. Yeah. So I am the exact opposite. So when I'm first with a woman, start of a new relationship, I would say for three months minimum, it's got to be monogamous and you're getting to know each other. Maybe six months, like however long, maybe eight months. But like if you if you first meet a woman, I don't really know her. Like she doesn't really know me. I don't trust her. I would say absolute minimum, you want to have three months of monogamy and then open it up and start dealing with other problems and other situations. Well, that would be my advice. Yeah, but the but the American tradition, like I, I know you're I'm saying you're normal. The American tradition is the opposite. Where people go through the first eight months of the relationship, they're both sleeping with their new it, sex. They're in effect. Here's what I think it doesn't cheat. work. It doesn't yeah. work because like so for example, Karina um flipped her car during the storms in, in LA and right. or in, in Southern California. And I was very worried about her and it was it was troubling and she was okay, everything worked out. Right. But if I had two I'd be a little con or three or four. Yeah. Uh, They're all four. What if she had two or three or four? What if those guys could help her out? What if there's another guy who meets her at the hospital? That's great. What if there's another guy who can who can put the new tire on her car? So you're only looking that's at one. That's why we have service. That's why we have services. We have fucking people for that. We got cops. We got. You're saying she can fuck the like, cops. You're saying she can fuck the guy from the Triple H Fuck anybody. We have. The, that's what money is for. So we don't have to fuck each other for these. Listen, these listen to this. Money. Talk money. <laughs> listen, to the sky. Listen to how blue pilled you are. I'm talking about love, and you are talking about money and. Cops. No, you're talking about the. You're talking about the absence of slavery and the and the and the promotion of justice through sex with others. I think that's like. Anti, anti Valentine's Day. Ju justice will. starts at home, Sky. What can I tell you? The end of slavery begins begins in the okay. bedroom. But so look, I, you I know, wanna, let, let's, let's talk about the, the jealousy thing uh, a, a little bit. You know, the green eyed monster is not on my back, but he's in the room. You know, I'm not like I'm not constantly jealous. I'm not someone's like, who are you talking to? Let me see your look, phone on this on this app. You know, I get to see all these people from different walks of life. You know, they, they describe themselves, they present themselves in a, in a certain way. You, you get to see what it is they care about in life, like drinking beer and going fishing. Like, you know, they give you a photo pictorial yeah. and a short narrative. This is who I am. This is what I care about. And the vast majority of them are incredibly shallow, stupid people. Um, uh -huh. This is really, this is like uh, social anthropology. But this uh, is like, uh, the other thing. I don't, I, you know, I know that you, you and I share our um, inability to accept large groups of people because we find most of them um, annoying or, or on, on, you know, just un intolerable. Right. Right. Yeah, I can't, I can't tolerate that many people. So the idea of like going out and trying to find another one, it just seems like fuck. It's too much effort, man. God damn it! I can't be. I can't be bothered. I got other shit to do than find more bitches like it just <laughs> it's too much work i want to change though i want to i want to not change myself but change the topic because oh oh, oh so you're done talking about jealousy all right i got you oh okay, no no right. it's, i guess not 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 completely we can bring that back but i wanted to go back to something else so the the clip of the video that you posted today was called yeah was calling today incel awareness day you know i'm almost 27 i'm almost 27 and i'm just like my life is over 
my my life has ended for a long long time now I think I missed something. Although I enjoyed the video because your delivery and some of the things you said, I don't totally understand what the connection is between the weird incel wizard guy who's about to be 30 and he's never had a girlfriend and he feels like his life is ending yeah. and your anecdotes about growing up around people that were all horrible and shit. So He is very much someone who let his high school experience define him. Uh, so that's woven into his narrative in a somewhat subtle way. I tried to actually use quite flattering clips of that guy. I have some other videos on my channel that are much less flattering of him. That um, guy just that guy just makes videos about himself being an incel. That's what he does. Yes. I'm still not laid. Day day five thousand. Still not laid. I mean, I, I have a uh, yes, yes. Every oh, year, every year he made a video titled "He was 24 and has never had a girlfriend. He's 25 and never 26. Never now 27. Yeah, I know." No, it's uh, yep. Where's he yeah. live? Where's that guy live? Michigan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I, There's yeah. girls in Michigan. There's women there. Well, I've seen. Them. He's lucky in some ways because he's in one of the last parts of America where you can get a factory job, and that's to my knowledge, that's what he's had. I I wish I had the luxury of getting a factory job, but yeah, he's in a luxury of there. getting a factory job. Oh yeah, bro. Well, come on. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, <totally. laughs> look, I can, I can talk about as much as you want, but um, no, I, I do think that. that's an interesting thing. It, it, certainly here in Canada, I, I don't know if you know people like this in the States, there are a lot of people who really do remain, they feel forever defined by the mistakes they made in high school, the accomplishments they had in high school, the identity yeah. they crafted for themselves in high school. Yeah, Melissa's saying the friend group that they have in high school, and a lot of people never make new friends again after that. So well, that is the that is weird. I mm -hmm. don't understand people that keep the same friends from high school into life or from mm -hmm. college into life. I'm like, uh, we've drifted. Like, we were great at that time, but, like, right. now you're a Trumpster, and yeah. I'm not yeah, your yeah, friend yeah. anymore. Like, I can't – you put – do you remember – You you I know you remember, but uh, please – recall the times when the internet was somewhat young and people were yep. still sending out mass emails to everyone on their email list. Mm -hmm. And they'd be look, I don't need you. You're for, they would forward shit like they, like her, their aunt sent them. And it was always something like lies, yeah. easily, easily verifiable lies. I and feel like overall there was this early phase in which the internet made people less lonely, uh, mm -hmm. perhaps because people were more fearless. And now yeah. the internet is making people much, much more uh, lonely. And a lot of what people fear are exactly the kind of worst case scenarios I've been through. Um, they fear being denounced for their sex life on the internet. Uh, I mean, I've had that on a big scale and small. Yeah. I mean, I've had a uh, during writer do that, but I've had small uh, female YouTube channels make up shit and make allegations against me, which is totally, to totally false and unreasonable and stuff. And I have to live with it. I have to be willing to say, look, I'm a public figure. I'm here to talk about Aristotle and politics mm -hmm. and try to change the world and, you know, uh, try to influence the future of the big movement, all these other things I care about so passionately. But do, how do we do book reviews of Stendhal's Chartreuse de Parma? I mean, they're, you know, as, apart from the, like, I do comedy, I do satire. Yeah. Do totally serious. Videos. This really matters to me. And if that comes at the price of this kind of gossip and slander, you know, I, I have to accept that. But most people are terrified of that. They're terrified of dealing with exactly the stuff we've dealt with. And again, I just remind you, we have videos talking about this. We have to deal with gossip slander from within Melissa's own family. Like what her yeah. own brother says, but what her father says about us. We had to deal with this for years. But uh, why have an incel? Why is Valentine's Day incel awareness day? And they and are, they are one and the same. And let me just say, Sky, here's the incel problem. Yeah. And then here's the in mon problem. What is an in mon problem? In mon. Okay. I'm not really that concerned about the incels. I'm interested. I'm concerned about in involuntary monogamy. <laughs> involuntary monogamy that's the biggest problem and i think you sky you have to deal with your jealousy issue so you can leave the ranks of the inmons which is you know, no like, oh, I, I'm, I'm not oh, i'm not involuntary i am voluntary i'm you voluntarily you monogamous you think so uh, yeah, Vol 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 volmon would be, would be uh, voluntary monogamy Let's i am 100 percent volmon because i find most people repulsive but and look so, so like so sky, you drive a truck it is possible you have a, a car accident and it crumples up your legs. Okay. Let's say hypothetically you used to be the best sex your girlfriend ever had, your wife ever had, and now you're not anymore because you had a car accident. You know, you could also get struck by lightning. It doesn't have to be that, whatever it is. You yeah. can have things that, that really Im impair you. You know, does your relationship have enough substance? 
intellectual substance, ethical substance, that she's still going to be your wife. She's she's still going to be committed to you and you're still going to be committed to her when you take that sexual element out of it. I'm in a very privileged position. I'm the best sex Melissa has ever had in her life. She, <laughs> she is the best sex I've ever had. Not everyone's in this position. Dude, what percentage of women are married to a man today who is not the best sex they've had in their life? How many women are in a committed relationship, boyfriend, girlfriend? But that's, but that's their fault. Not, and, they, and they know. And they know every fucking day they know, oh, yeah, well, Jared used to eat my pussy better than you. You know, whatever. Steve used to fuck me better than you. Yeah, maybe I do anal if you could fuck me like Steve. You gave me as many orgasms as Steve, but you don't fucking put it up. And for what? The guy has other redeeming qualities. There are probably other good things about the guy, right? That's yeah. not my situation. But the point is this. I can get struck by lightning, too. I can get hit by a car, too. Like you live your life, you build your relationships in a way where there is enough intellectual substance, ethical substance, yeah, political substance, whatever. That you know, okay, if the day comes when you know, uh, the, you know, I can't be for you what I was sexually for the whatever the first ten years of the relationship or something, or you happen to meet someone who is a who who, who is the best sex of your life and I'm not. What have I got to be jealous of? Why can't I just be happy for you? Reciprocally, why can't you just be? Happy? You're talking about extenuating circumstances that may no. or may not change the chemistry no. of your relationship. No, I'm talking about things that are inevitable because they're all not old, inevitable. You got two options, guy: old age and death. Which one? You, which one? Well, it, if you, hopefully, when I'm old, she's she's old too. You know, that's not the same. Like, goddamn. Like, if I if I fell off a roof and hurt my head and I was you know an invalid, I think that I'd be you know able to. Yeah, right. But but what if you and your girlfriend have a relationship? You don't fall off a roof and hit your head. She just meets a guy whose dick game is better than yours. You meet a woman who's more your type. Whatever it is, woman has a tighter pussy, a bigger pair of tits. Whatever it is that turns you on. What if you meet a woman who is the greatest sex of your life, and it's not your wife, it's not your primary partner? If you have a relationship with real intellectual substance, that's not a problem. If you live the life of the mind, not just individually, but with everybody in your life, you live the life of mind with your. If you're living the life of the mind, then the big tits and the 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 tight pussy and the big tits don't matter because the life of mind doesn't allow to just to just go after those idiotic things. Could you give this man's video a thumbs down? He just said tight pussy and big tits don't matter. I am offended, Sky. <laughs> I, I would like you to retract that statement, Sky. I don't know what kind of game you are playing here. Thumbs okay? up thumbs out. I don't care. Engagement's everything. It's after dark. I'm keeping it all the way real. Of, of course this, it matters. Okay, but you're, reading, you're not keeping it real because that's still that's still like that still has nothing to do with justice and slavery. I mean, I remember reading it. serious social science research, and this overlaps with slavery, by the way. And it was talking about poverty-stricken uh, workers in mines on the border between Myanmar and Thailand and them sleeping with prostitutes. And it was – like the point was because it was a study of the prostitution yeah. in that part of the world. As like, look, even at this incredibly low level of poverty, these guys are themselves among the oppressed workers of the world, kind of thing, the most benighted people. These guys working in this third-world mine on the border between Myanmar and Thailand. These guys still are setting aside a significant percentage of their income to sleep with these prostitutes. And the social science researchers interviewed them, like, you know, what, you know, what motivates this behavior, whatever you want to say, whatever the questions they were saying. And every single one of them said, tight pussy. And I got to read this brilliant statement by someone with a fucking PhD from Paris, France, explaining that tight pussy is a social construct and that we need to move beyond the tight pussy paradigm in a fucking sexual way. I'm saying there is like, you know what? You know what? <laughs> It's a social you know, construct. Penis size is not a social construct, guys. You know, I'm sorry. This is – we are, in fact, getting into the realm of things that are not social construct. You know what? Veganism is a social construct. As committed as they to be, a lot it's of things are – you know what? Yes. You know what? Like, it's just like a co social construct, though. I thought you were optimistic about kind of the future of human civilization that we were going to move on past. You think I'm optimistic? Up. Yeah, I thought on, the, on the, this issue, not not about veganism. No, of course not. The world's going to end. You know, Bangkok's going to be underwater within ten years. After dark. Bangkok underwater with my name and lights. Girls pulling off their shirts like Talladega Nights. Oh, you tell me now the North Pole's going to melt when I've been getting laid since motherfucking Roosevelt. I, I, in the morning, I'm optimistic. By nighttime, I'm, I thought I'm... you were optimistic. Like in contrast to my critique of bikini activism, I thought you you or your overall perspective was. You know, we have these sexual hangups left over from the dark ages of Christianity, and we're going to progress 
past that, it sounds to me like you want to stay in the Dark Ages forever. It sounds like you want to, I don't know, it sounds like you're I don't think, on, first bro. of all, uh, well, two things. I don't think that my life is going to, uh, if I'm in the Dark Ages, then I guess I'm comfortable there. Uh, although yeah. I think that I've, I've, I think that I've, to go back to the darkness, you know, I'll, I, I've, I've lived a life to, to the hilt and I've, I've, I've ventured into the darkness. I've come back and I think that um, my life is better. But, but your hard. girlfriend doesn't get to do that now. Your girlfriend doesn't get to. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know. That you, no, no. So let's say you, look, I don't know your girlfriend's age. Would you want to just give approximate? Like, she's she's, she's she's like twenty seven. Okay, so she's twenty seven. So she doesn't get to do the things you did at twenty seven, motherfucker. Who knows what? Who knows? You're forty five. You said you already. You already lived. You lived a full life. You got with a younger woman who's twenty seven. Okay, no. you have more of an age gap than I do. But you I think mean, there's yeah. no injustice for you to treat this woman as your property. She gets My no property. Such she doesn't do any of the shit you did when you My were 27, property. you fucking hypocrite. That's no. the reality. <laughs> it <laughs> is unequal. <laughs> it is oppression. First right? of all, at 27, at 27, I was in college. And I, I, I had my life different. My he went, life he went to college late. He went away and lived a full I life did. and then went to college afterwards. Yeah, right? When I was okay. 19, I left, the, I, left the, I left the country when I was 19. And then I came back to college when I was 25 and, and uh, lived my life that way. And then, you know, yeah, I have, I have lived a full life, but not everybody wants that either. You know, not everybody wants that. Not everyone else. You could be uh, in love with a woman the exact same age as you. But she devoted her life to the study of Buddhist philosophy and doing humanitarian work in third world countries. Random example. You know? And therefore, she didn't sleep with many certain. She didn't have a lot of those experiences. And she wants to have those experiences now. But you're saying, no, the, the darkness of the dark ages ain't over yet. You want this uh, trad cod monogamous, monogamous relationship. So the, 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 the darkness the of the dark ages will, 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 will plague us probably for quite a long time. And I'm sorry that I'm not as sexually. Uh, you, I, I am just pointing out, you are cool with this sexual freedom for yourself. No, I'm but not. not for your own no, wife no. or primary no, partner. Are, she no, doesn't you, get to live by the same rules you live no, by. You, so. calling, you said that the incels and in <laughs> what do you call them? In mon involuntary in mon. monogamy. This is the this is the real monogamy. problem. That's that's ridiculous. So happy <laughs> happy uh, incel day, my friend. Happy incel awareness day. Incel Did you get presents? Day. Did you get any presents for Valentine's Day? I want I want to show to my my best girl here what you gave me for Valentine's Day. I did not give out. What did you get? All these other hoes know what they have. <laughs> okay, so here we go. This is a collection of some of the other lesser known utopian thinkers. So you know, Melissa and I read uh, Thomas More's Utopia. I read yes, it out yes. loud. You really go through it, and this is Saint Simon Fourier and uh, Robert Owen. So yeah, it's it, it's it's not you know it's one of those things that's painfully historically important, but emphasis on on painfully. So that's uh, 1803 to 1813. The word socialism is first used uh, 1835. So I just in terms of history of political science, this is one of the uh -huh. even if it's even if it's complete this is bullshit. Day, President. Yeah. Okay. okay. Let's keep going. Oh, well, you, you, you... <laughs> Let's Thought she was going to buy me a double-sided dildo? What did you no, think, I... bro? That was going to be a vibrator that I can slide up my ass? What were you expecting, bro? Jesus what do you think? I'm glad you thought she was going to buy me a four-way with Nina and Randa. I was expecting that. Uh, to be honest, I was like, okay, shit. This, here it comes. Identical twins. Again. Another Again. pair of identical twins. You think, you, think, you think two women is exhausting. All right. Uh, so this is, I, again, I can't endorse this. I just received this gift. I haven't read one page of it, but this is about a uh, Napoleonic war in Spain. So for most, you know, if you're not from Spain, if you're not into Spanish politics history, it's probably a side of it you've, you've ignored or neglected because, you know, uh, most also likely. the, well, you, you've probably read uh, war and peace by Tolstoy, yes. but obviously yes. that's geographically pretty far removed from the Spanish. So the Spain and Portugal, uh, side of that. And, and even more intellectual, you guys may not know, I have another channel that just deals with uh, retro yeah. video gaming, the world's most subtle form of vegan propaganda, my Veganvania uh, channel, but there so is Star Force. So subtle, you don't it's even a, know what's happening. It's a super, uh, what should I say, it's protean in its simplicity. 
this is really one of those early sources of the whole uh, genre. Uh, yeah, for, for, for a guy that's always saying that we should quit all addictions like that's right. alcohol and And I just want to say, um, I don't buy these hoes shit, okay? You, I don't give them nothing but orgasms oh and you know, marching orders to get to the gym and that's, tune it the fuck you, up. You're, okay? You are now, I think so you're I a vegan Christian state. You're I give them taste. nothing, okay? You're the vegan Tristan Tate. Asymmetrical. <laughs> what did, did you hear this? This out of the Sam Bankman Freed trial, there was this great phrase: hierarchical, unequal Chinese emperor style polygamy. That was, I think, it was the first time I ever. That's one way of putting it. <laughs> Sam Bankman. Freed, that's, that's your. That's your. Uh, that's your. Your. Uh, your altruist. Your uh, effective altruist. Well, <laughs> as, as much <laughs> more effective than Peter Singer. Let's no, <laughs> call no, comes no. back to Peter Singer. <laughs> okay. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome from the hit TV show Bones, Emily Deschanel, and author of the best-selling book Skinny Bitch, Rory Friedman. <laughs> Up in a vegan war, I cannot win at all. I do the things you want me to, the way I used to do. Would you love me, baby? Or leave me the feeling you used? Would you go and bring my heart? Peter Singer got the best of me. I just keep on coming back incessantly Oh why did you have to run your game on me? I should have known right from the start You'd go and break my heart justify animal testing <laughs> totally. how, how does peter singer vindicate justify his own sex life in terms of effective altruism there is the real That's question it. You just, i would I like to thank all the other phony ass bitches for coming on this podcast before i got here i'd like to thank everyone the for being phony. totally dishonest all right that's here. enough my guests are the best guests <laughs> you're the best and uh i i i save the best for last you're not the last one mr cl so uh Stay in touch, guy i will <laughs> there he goes the yo fuck Fuck these niggas, bro. Fuck these niggas, nigga. You know what I'm saying? I'm on my Farrakhan Don shit right now, bro. Y'all don't gotta say we with you. You're not with me. No one's with me because no one's really with me. It's just me and God.